Hello everyone, this is Julie Nopkov. I'm your professor for constitutional law. This class is a split class. We have undergraduate students and graduate students enrolled. Unfortunately, I cannot be there this week because I am at the annual meeting of the American Political Science Association. But I don't want you to miss a whole week of content, so I'm gonna ask you to watch this video. Uh, there is a short assignment I'll ask you to do on Blackboard uh, for today's content. And then for Thursday's class, I'm going to ask you to complete a survey, and we'll be talking about that in class uh, when we all reconvene for our first face-to-face -face meeting on uh, one week from this coming Tuesday. But I wanna give you a little background about the class. Uh, this will help you to decide whether you wanna stay in this class or maybe run away screaming. Um, it's often helpful to make these decisions pretty early. Uh, so a little bit about the class. It is a constitutional law class. Uh, we are looking at big questions uh, as they develop over time. What is a constitution? How should it be interpreted? And how does the constitution function as a structure for government? What is the appropriate role of the national government in a federal system? And what is the appropriate role for the courts? Uh, thinking about constitutional law, you might be thinking about, well, what has the Supreme Court been up to most recently? I should warn you that this course is really a course in constitutional development. So we're going to be looking about looking at questions about how the contemporary system has emerged over long-standing constitutional debates over time. Uh, and we will be starting at the very beginning during the colonial era and going all the way up to uh, some decisions that were released just last summer. I do want to give you a few warnings about this course. Number one, it is uh, comprehensive, but it's not going to cover every single aspect of constitutional law. That would be impossible to do within a semester. So you're going to get an overview of each branch and how they operate with each other and how they deal with federalism. Uh, we're going to look at things like the Commerce Clause and administrative powers. This sounds really boring on, on the face of it, but I promise you, you will learn to love administrative power and the Commerce Clause by the end of the term. Um, we're not going to talk much about state courts. That's unfortunate, but it would really be a different course. And I'm covering the federal courts because those issues are generally better known. And um, as you may know, states uh, can interpret their Supreme laws differently from the way that the US Constitution does things. I wanna warn those of you who are thinking about law school down the road, this is not a prep course for law school. Some of you may wanna go eventually, but we are focusing more on the conflicts and debates over constitutional law at, as it has developed, not on developing an understanding of what the right answers are. Uh, this course is also more focused on the historical development of rights uh, and the relationship uh, among the branches in the American system. So if you go to law school, what this course is going to do is prepare you to be extremely annoying to your con law professor because you'll be asking a lot of questions about politics and how these cases fit into developmental contexts. One other warning I want to issue is about the workload for this class. Uh, you're going to be reading a lot of cases and a lot of background history. Uh, it is extremely important that you do the reading. You cannot do well in this course if you do not do the reading and do it carefully. Uh, and at times the reading is going to be a little bit boring. Um, so I just want to make sure that you know that. And it's going to be pretty challenging sometimes too, because we're dealing with some very difficult conceptual issues. Uh, it's cumulative. So you want to make sure that you don't get behind. If you do get behind, you're going to find yourself running into some difficulty uh, pretty quickly. So make sure that you have the time to put into this course from the very beginning to the very end. However, even with all these warnings, I think this is really great stuff. Um, we look at the kind of structure that the Constitution provides for the government and how the government then regulates our lives. Uh, and we look at how the courts have negotiated the delicate balance among the branches of governments and uh, between the national government and states. And we ask serious questions about constitutional interpretation and what makes constitutional interpretation legitimate. So these are really big questions that have an impact uh, both on the way that government functions and on the way that we live our daily lives. I wanna cover a little bit of administrative stuff. This is all in the syllabus, which you should review very carefully, but I just want to uh, comment on a few things so that they are clear for you. 
Uh, class participation and attendance you will see is a component of your grade. I encourage you to come to class and keep up with the reading. Um, this is not because I have a, a deep ego invested in looking out and seeing all of your smiling faces uh, in every class, but really for you, because if you're not coming to class and, and you do get behind, it's going to have a real impact on your grade. Um, in terms of participation, uh, the way that this is going to work, you will have two basically free absences. Uh, I don't want any excuses. Um, you know, if your dog is sick, you need to take your dog to the vet. Uh, if your hamster died um, or if uh, you just had some kind of conflict, you have two free absences uh, for which you don't need any excuses. After that, uh, the absences are going to count against you. Um, if you come to class all the time attentively uh, and uh, you don't participate at all, the baseline for attendance is going to be a B. But if you participate, it will go up from there. I ask that you keep your uh, participation respectful and pertinent. We are going to be talking about some fairly uh, heated political issues. So it's very important that we collectively maintain an atmosphere in the class in which everybody feels comfortable. Um, that being said, everybody feel com feeling comfortable doesn't mean that we all agree about everything. In fact, our discussions are going to be a lot more interesting and a lot more fun if we do have some differences of opinion. So I do encourage you to speak up if you feel like uh, the class is all going in one direction, but you have a, a different view on the question. Um, I will give you one more caveat here. Um, don't waste a lot of time trying to figure out where I stand on particular issues uh, and repeat these issues to me on your assignments. Um, I've spent a lot of time thinking about where I stand on constitutional issues and, you know, I, I'm not likely to be impressed with you trying to read my mind. I'm usually going to be relatively open about it anyway. You're going to be rewarded instead for expressing thoughtful and logical interpretations of the materials, uh, regardless of what position you take. Um, and do try to be on time uh, for all the classes. Um, one other uh, component of, of attendance and reading, again, this is meant to encourage you to keep up with the reading and do it for every class. We're going to have eight unannounced reading checks that will be administered at the beginning of class at fairly random intervals. Um, the way these will work is I will pass out a sheet of paper. It'll have a relatively simple question on it about the reading. You'll answer that question. Uh, if you come to class and you turn in a piece of paper that has your name on it, you're going to get three points. Uh, if you answer the question correctly, you'll get five points. Um, we'll do eight of them, and I will count the highest five that you do over the course of the semester. Uh, this is a writing intensive course, so we're going to be doing a lot of writing and revising. Uh, there are three short writing assignments and one longer writing assignments. The three short assignments are to write an opinion, a dissent, and a concurrence in three different cases over the course of the term, uh, or three different, uh, one, one of them is actually a case that I'm making up. It was not one that was ever adjudicated before the Supreme Court. Um, you will be required to revise two of those papers. You may choose to revise the third if you wish to. Uh, the longer assignment is going to also be done in drafts. Um, this will be asking you to write your own opinion in a case or controversy that is um, likely to be before the Supreme Court in the near future. So I will give you more materials about that as we get later in the semester um, and we begin to think about that um, more fully. Um, I've redesigned this class a bit from previous uh, administrations. Uh, and there are not going to be any quizzes or finals for the class. But that being said, these short reading checks will uh, encourage you to stay accountable with the reading. And in order to do the writing assignments, again, you're going to need to be uh, keeping up with things and keeping track of things. In terms of the materials for the class, uh, the textbook that you're going to need is the Gilman Graber Whittington American Constitutional Law One. One really important note on this, make sure you get the latest edition uh, because the way that the syllabus is designed, I have the page numbers in from that edition, which will make it easier to find your reading assignments. 
There are also a few cases that are not in um, uh, Gilman, Graber, and Whittington. Those cases are going to be up on Blackboard for you to find. Uh, you will need to access Blackboard for this course. Uh, in fact, uh, the first time you're going to be accessing it will be right now to uh, do the things that I'm asking you to do during this period that I am gone. Um, so make sure that you are getting into Blackboard. If you're having any problems with Blackboard, you need to let me know as soon as possible, and I'll try to get those fixed again as quickly as possible. Um, there are a number of course policies that you will see in the back of the syllabus. You will see the policies that are specific to this class and then the broader university policies that apply to all classes. If you are a student with a disability, I would appreciate uh, your getting in touch with me by email this week and setting up an appointment with me uh, as soon as I'm back so that we can talk about accommodations. Um, for late papers, um, I would, might be amenable to giving you a short extension if you have a, a good reason for asking for one, but only if you ask in advance. Um, and again, you, you need to have some reason for asking in advance. Late papers are penalized uh, half a grade per day. Uh, so that means that as soon as the papers do, most of them are due in class. Uh, if you don't turn the paper in in class, then after that, it, uh, it becomes late. In terms of being fairly strict about uh, turning things in on time, the reason for this is that I'm going to be giving you fairly extensive comments on the papers that you write. And that takes me a little bit of time to do. I don't want to get behind because if I get behind, then that makes it harder for those of you who are looking to revise them. So uh, for everybody and for the efficient functioning of the class, I will ask you to get things done uh, in time. All right. Uh, I know that this is kind of a blizzard of information and video is not the way that I would prefer to do this. So I will ask you please to email me if you have any questions about anything that I've said, or if you have any questions that come up as you're looking through the syllabus and um, making sure that everything there is clear. I would prefer to have all those things cleared up um, before we meet in person uh, in a little over a week. Um, so because we are going to be having this class uh, happen outside of the classroom for the first week of class, I've designed a couple of activities that, that uh, for which if you complete them, you will earn one extra credit point for each of them. So the first one is going to be to log into Blackboard. I will have a, a place set up where I'm going to ask you to write a really short uh, description of what you see as the main purposes for a constitution and what you see as the advantages or disadvantages of having a constitution written down. Okay, so two questions. What, what do you see as the main purposes of a constitution? And what do you see as the advantages and disadvantages of having a written constitution rather than just having one that is uh, binding through oral tradition? That's the first activity. The second activity, and I will send out an email to remind you of this, this one will go live uh, a little bit later in the week, will be for you to complete a short survey about constitutions. Um, this is, again, going to provide us with a little bit of fodder for our discussion when I return. So uh, I would like to see as many people complete this as possible so that we can have a good discussion of these issues. And once again, if you do that survey, you will be eligible for one extra credit point in the class. That is all that I have for you today. Uh, I will look forward to seeing you all in class uh, in the beginning of September, right after Labor Day. But if you have any questions or concerns before that, please do not hesitate to email me and do not let the auto respond that you get in when you send the email out be too alarming. I will be checking my email and I will be looking carefully for any emails uh, from this class. So enjoy your first week of class and uh, log into Blackboard and do these uh, two hopefully relatively fun and interesting activities. And uh, I will hear from you uh, if you have any questions and I will see you the day after Labor Day. Thanks.